Amen, amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. We're so glad to be in the house this morning. Why don't you just do me a quick favor? Let's just bow our heads in a moment of thanks unto God. When you come into worship, this is a great time to thank God. Thank God that you're alive today. Thank God for your home. Thank God if you have a car. Thank God you have a way to get around. If you got a job, thank God for your job. If you've got family, thank God for the family that's around you today. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but if there's something going on in your life, know that we serve a big God. We serve a God that can turn it around in an instant. So when we bow our heads, when we humble our hearts, when we say, thank you, Lord, when we say, Lord, you can handle this, when we say, Lord, I'm turning it over to you, that's the time when we can have freedom, freedom in our life to praise him, freedom in our life to be happy and not sad, knowing and believing that God has got your back. How many of you want to believe and how many of you believe that God has got your back? And so when we come into worship, that's why we should have a smile on our face. That's why we should be happy because we know that God's got it. I don't know who needed to hear that, but I want to tell you God's got it. He's got your situation. He's, he's got your pain and, and he can turn it around and turn it into joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength today. So even early in the morning, we can send the praises up knowing that God can shower down some blessings. Somebody in this place should ask God to shower down a blessing in your life. Shower down a blessing for your week. Let's just talk to him right now. Heavenly Father, we love you. We lift you up. Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to praise and worship your name. Father, this is worship. This is the time where we let you know how big you are in our lives. We showed up this morning. We're, we're watching today, and we, we know and believe, God, that you have something in store for us. So, Father, feed us with your bread of heaven. Bless your people today. Heal today. Deliver today. And, and continue to be in this place. Father, we lift you up and magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give them some praise today. And let's stand on our feet and let's worship him today. Because our God is a big God as we worship him.
Sometimes you just have to stand in a quiet place and say it to yourself. It's, it's your season. season. God, I don't know what's happening, but I think that you are shaping me for something better. I believe that it's my time right now, God. It's Everybody else time. has their chance, and I'm standing it's on your word, time. and I am your child, and you said, touch not thine anointing. I want what I came for, God. I want blessings on blessings on blessings. My breakthrough is right around the corner.
church say amen come on stand on your feet and give God a great big hand give God the greatest praise you can oh to his hands God's unchanging hand everybody ought to hold to his hand y'all know that God's unchanging hand
Just turn to your neighbor and say, hey, man, neighbor. Oh, sometimes you just got to go back to that old landmark. Sometimes you got to go back just a couple decades. You know, we used to have church in the yesteryears. Back then, we didn't wait on Sunday morning to get ready. Rather, we got ready on Saturday night because we knew something was going to happen on Sunday morning. So we put on our, our Sunday best. Anybody remember them days, the Sunday best, where you got ready on Saturday night? Mama didn't wait till Sunday morning to decide on what restaurant she was going to. She started fixing that chicken the night before. Those beans were smoldering inside of that hot boiling water. And those greens were already set the night before. Have I got a witness? And so when we went to church, we didn't drag ourselves to church. We didn't make it a hard effort to get to church. But rather, we were excited about going to church because we knew we hadn't seen the saints all week long. And we couldn't wait on Sunday morning to see the brothers and sisters inside of the church because we knew that choir was going to walk down the center aisle. Y'all remember them days? And they were going to move from side to side, and they were going to sway. And they were happy in the Lord. And you had folk in the church that were already shouted up. They were already praised up. You know, you didn't have to praise them up on Sunday. They remembered that God had been good to them all week long. He had provided for them health and strength. And so when they came to church, they had a smile on their face, and they were ready to worship the Lord, whether it was snowing or not, whether it was sun shining or drenching in rain, they were with the Lord. What am I saying? The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Now, Larry, some people got that wrong. They think the Sabbath day just means a day of rest. So what they do is they stay inside of the bed and they rest all day long and they don't do anything uh, during the Sunday morning or the Sunday, right? And so what they would do is, the Bible says it's a day of rest, which means you don't work on Sunday morning, right? It means it's a day of rest. God works six days, and then he rested on, on the seventh day, and uh, he didn't do any more work or labor. But that's really not what it means. It means it's a day of resting from working and laboring. It also means, really, it's a day, how shall I say it, of being happy of having fun, of laughing and enjoying the Sabbath day by going to church and then going home and eating dinner with your family and laughing and looking at the game and, and, and just joking and having a good day. So how come we here looking so sad this morning when the Lord has been better to us than we've been to ourselves? Have I got a witness? And we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And we might need him more tomorrow, so we better shout our way through today so we can shout our way through the week. Have I got a witness? I know what you're saying. You're saying you're too old. Well, you ain't dead. You might be too old, but you ain't dead. As long as you got breath in your body, you ain't dead. Have I got... It, it, we used to say anything dead ought to be buried. Well, you're not dead, so we're not going to bury anybody today. Turn to your neighbor and just wave at them. Say, I know what you mean, neighbor. Amen. God bless you. We're going to go into a, a moment of prayer today because y'all look like y'all just are working so hard today. Y'all coming like this, like y'all so tired. I can barely make it. And so I had to wake you up a little bit and let you realize that there's sunshine on the inside of you that can come on the outside of you. We're, we're ready for prayer. Y'all come up to the altar. For you, we're praying for. We're praying for uh, mother, sister, Julia Edison. She lost her mother on last week. I pray for you. You pray for me. We're all a part, part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. We're praying for Julia, Julia Edison and her family funeral services will be held at Calvin, I believe, Calhoun funeral services on next, this Friday around 
9 30 10 o'clock as you bow your heads whisper a word for sister edison right now and also we're praying for reverend rivers and minister rivers they have had so many family members to pass on to the other side of jordan and we're praying for them yet there are members who are standing in the gap between life and death and so they're praying for folk who are sick pray for sister uh, Mary Weather who lost her nephew young man who was at Cleveland Heights you might have saw it in the papers they found him deceased at his office and so we're praying for that family Denise Ferris Lillian Aries Denise Bryson we're praying for James Nash we're praying for Brother Young right now, and Sister Young. Brother Young is still dealing with some issues in his body. Norma Shong, we're praying for Nancy Ware, Juanita Canada, Bobby Watkins, and other. Dear Lord, we come now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the many miracles that you grant to us. And even now, you said to us that even in the midst of death, you are always life, and you're constantly resurrecting people you went into the city of name and there was a young man who had been buried they were taking his coffin out you stopped the burial session and you touched the coffin and you ordered that that young man would be would come forth from the dead and the young man and his son did the widow shouted the son shouted because you were letting us know that you have a way of bringing life even in the midst of death. And so we pray for Julia and her family right now. Remind her that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Walk with her through this valley called Shadow of Death. Be, O oh God, with these others who are on the prayer list and those who stand around this altar. We're believing that you can heal, that you can deliver whatever they're struggling with. Let them know that they not have a defeated attitude and mindset, but rather because they are in you and you are in them, they are triumphant even in their situation. We pray that you will heal bodies today and that miracles will occur. Even now, finances will be straightened out. Relationships will be corrected. And we're believing it because of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. Give God a great big hand, praise. Amen. Turn to your neighbor, wave at him, say, good to see your neighbor. Wave at your neighbor. Praise God as our technicians come now. You can't let the size of your battle change the strategy for your success. His success came in his preparation before the battle was even started. What did David do? He tapped into the power of putting his battle in God's hands. See, the truth of the matter is if you put it in God's hands, it will always hit the target. If you put it in God's hands, you can be delivered. If you put it in God's hands, it will release your anxiety. If you put it in God's hands, you will get over what's bothering you. If you put it in God's hands, God will lead you to victory. See, the truth of the matter is, if you put it in God's hands, he'll lead you to the resources that you need. See, our protection doesn't just come from our armor. It comes from who we trust. The Freedom Conference Weekend is back. We have representatives from PNC, Huntington, Dollar Bank, Thriving Financial, and other organizations coming together to give you all the resources you need for home ownership, retirement, budgeting, finance, and a special training on entrepreneurship. Sunday, wealth creation, mental health, and starting your own business. Invite a friend and let's go from surviving to thriving. Noon Bible study and prayer is back. Do you have some free time on Tuesdays? Join Pastor Larry and friends on Tuesday, April 11th at noon for in-person Bible study in the sanctuary. This group is called the Champions Club and it's for everybody. You need midweek prayer, you need a steady monthly gathering for Bible study. So join in. If you can't attend, then tune in online. 
Attention all seniors, join us on Tuesday, March 28th for the Senior Luncheon and Awards in the Fine Arts Center. Grab the flyer in the foyer and bring a friend. We are asking everyone to give a special offering on Easter of $100, $200, or $500 above and beyond your regular giving for a special Easter offering. This will help us kick off our Dream Center 2 project and annual Pave the Way Campus Parking Lot Maintenance for 2023. It's Easter season and we want you to join us for Palm Sunday on April 2nd. This year there will be a pre-Easter helicopter Easter egg drop in the park right across from the church. This will take place right after our 11 a.m. service on Sunday, oh, April yeah. 2nd. Then on Easter Sunday morning, join us for our 8.30 a.m. early rise service or our 11 a.m. He's Alive service. On that day, we will have an Easter egg hunt for the children and youth, candy, and activities. Also, we will be showing some highlights from our kids' ministry on the jumble screens that Sunday so your entire family can come and watch your kid talk about Jesus in front of the entire church. This year, we are asking everybody to bring a guest with them. Register your guests at the Connect Desk so we can give them a special gift for visiting on Resurrection Sunday. Mount Zion, on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God another great big hand praise as we stand and turn our Bibles to Malachi 3, 6 through 12, a marvelous, marvelous text of giving. Again, we hope that you will join us on next Sunday with regards to our financial freedom conference that Pastor Larry uh, leads us every year. Let's give him a great big hand praise for that. Amen. I'm sure he'll tell you more about it as he comes forth to share with you today. We're going to have a brunch uh, a kind of working session even after the service is on next Sunday. So hopefully you'll sign up for that and all kinds of folk will be here to help you on your finances. We have sent that message home to you. Hope you're listening to it because we want everyone to be uh, blessed even in wealth and know how to manage their affairs and their funds as well. Uh, also on uh, the following Tuesday, we're going to have a senior luncheon. Uh, and so all of our seniors can bring in their families and join us at 12 o'clock. I believe that's somewhere around the 26th, uh, 28th of uh, this month. And we're going to be celebrating all the marvelous things that our seniors do. There will be no cost. Uh, this time, and we hope that you would join us in that Tuesday at 12 noon affair. Amen. And also make sure that your children are here on Palm Sunday. Say Palm Sunday. Hopefully that you'll pray with us for a nice day. We're going to have our egg drop, and we're going to be outside just celebrating and having a good time with family on, the, on that day and also on Easter Sunday morning as Pastor Larry comes now. Amen. As our Bibles are turned to Malachi 3, 6 through 12, we're going to read that responsibly. The Bible says this. The Bible says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thinking unto God. Thanking God for all we have and all we'll ever have. It's because of the goodness and the graciousness of God. Know today when you give, it pleases God. And what happens when we please God? God will do this. He'll grant the desires of your heart. You know, we all have things in our heart that we desire to have in our lives. 
For some of us, it may be children. For some of us, it may be a breakthrough. Maybe it's financially. Maybe it's in your life, in your home. Maybe it's yes. a breakthrough in health. Oh, Maybe yes. it's promotion or growth in your life. But as long as a desire is in your heart and it aligns with God, the Bible talks about how he will grant that desire to you. But note this, that he does not grant these desires just for the sake of it. Know this, God isn't going to just give you something that you're going to misuse. He wants to align. He wants to align our ways. And so as we align our ways, I need you to know that when you give, when you do what God has asked you to do, you're aligning your ways with the Lord. And I believe that God is going to bless you. The Bible says that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out some blessings. So many that you can't receive it all. Is there anybody in this place that can use a blessing? Just say amen. Amen. As we give today, we don't give grudgingly, but we give cheerfully, knowing and believing that God loves a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We lift you up. We magnify you even today. As we align to your ways, God, as we follow your word, we pray, God, that you will bless us immeasurably. We thank you, God, for our church and this ministry and all that we're able to do because of the faithful people of God. Continue to bless us even into the future. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are bringing a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. Even online, you can go to mzov.org or go to the Givelify app and you can give right now or text to give. Amen. God, a great big hand praise as you remain standing for just a moment, lifting up a word of prayer even now for what God is getting ready to do. Ask him to speak to you, speak through me to you. Ask him to hide me behind the cross. Come on, somebody. We cannot have preaching without praying. We will be just an empty sound, tingling symbol. Ask God to speak right now. We need to hear a word from the Lord. There's something you've been struggling with, something you've been going through all week long, and you need God to heal you. You need God to speak to you. There's something that has troubled you in mind, heart, and spirit. But we believe that God is able to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think. And so he says to us, we must ask and think our way into the blessing that we're asking for. I don't know what it is. God has just said to me, there's someone 
who have been burning down all week long, troubled about many things, you need to know that God can speak to you in his strange and awesome way. Jesus can come into your presence and into your midst by way of his spirit, and he can give you the peace that pass all understanding, but you must ask him for it. You must ask him. The Bible says, seek, seek me early in the morning. Find me. You will find me. You will find rest unto your heart and your soul. God becomes your refuge in time of trouble. Will you talk to him? Ask him to let me forget me. Come on, somebody's just started praying right then. I felt a touch. I felt another touch from God. I felt his presence from someone else. There seemed to be a chain reaction in this place. I can feel somebody in here who's just really, really talked to God. It's almost giving me a Holy Ghost laugh here just in a moment. God, we thank you for these prayers and these marvelous Christians and saints who have come to church to worship you in spirit and in truth, God. We love them so very much because they are your angels sent to us on earth. And you told us uh, that sometimes we entertain angels unaware. We have angels in the church by way of these marvelous worship uh, people and congregation. Thank you, God, for what you're about to say to us and do for us. In Jesus' name we pray and all the people of God shouted, amen. Give God another great big hand praise as you go to your seat. As you turn your Bibles to the book of Daniel, how many of you think you can find the book of Daniel? Say amen. amen. How many of you think you cannot find the book of Daniel? Say, help me, Lord. Okay, there's at least a few honest people in the house. We have not talked from the book of Daniel in a long time, and I think it would be good for us to visit the book of Daniel. If you cannot find it, it's in the Old Testament. Uh, Minor prophets in that area, uh, prophecy, Isaiah. If you get to Isaiah, you might find Daniel. But if you can't find it, just look around as if you're looking at it. <laughs> or either look down at your knees, and I will think that you have found this marvelous book. I remember uh, I was where some of you are at. I remember this time pastor would tell me where to go to, and I would just look down at the book, I knew good and well I couldn't find that book. You know, when you talk about lamentation, lamentation, uh, I couldn't find that book. Deuteronomy, I couldn't find that book. Philippians, I didn't know what that was. But anyhow, here's what it says in, in Daniel, the third chapter. It is a marvelous story, one that most of us are familiar with. And I'm going to read, and you can just put it up in the King James translation, starting at verse 19, because we're going to talk about Daniel. We're going to talk about a story that Daniel tells by way of King Nebuchadnezzar, starting in the 19th verse. Here's what it says. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury. Say fury. And the, and the expression on his face expression on his face and the expression on his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, fury and, ex and the expression on his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated. And he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach. Say, bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Verse 21. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, and their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. Fell bound into the fiery furnace burning fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar, say Nebuchadnezzar, was astonished. 
And he rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the fire? They answered to the king, true, O king. That's right. Here is my verse, verse 25. He answered and said, but I see men unbound walking in the midst of the fire. But I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire. But I see four men unbound, and I see them walking in the midst of the fire. I see them walking right there in the fire itself. And the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. Verse 21, it says, they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar says, but I see four men. I put in three, but there is a fourth man. I see all four of them walking in the midst of the fire, and they who were bound are now unbound. Those who were tied up are now untied. Those who were placed there now are accommodated with the fourth person. And he looks like the son of the gods. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, whether you know it or not, you got what it takes. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't worry. I wish I had a witness. Say, don't fret. Say, don't fear. Don't get out of whack. Don't become discouraged. Stop acting so disappointed. Weeping may endure for a night. Even in the fire. But when Nebuchadnezzar looks into the fire in the morning, joy cometh in the morning. I wish you had that subject up there. You are going, you, you, you've got what it takes. The other day I was looking into the prayer box and I read a prayer from a person by the name of Jessica. Jessica wrote a prayer and I read it and I was really, really shocked about what I, what I read. She wrote these words. She says, so much is going on in my life right now. And when she writes the word so, she has all of these O-O-O's behind the S, which means it's really a lot of things going on in my life. She said, my son is rebellious. And he's just not disrespectful, but rather he is, she says, super disrespectful. She said in that prayer request where she was describing her situation, she, she said, my daughter barely communicates with me anymore. She goes up to her room and closes the door, and I never hear from her all day long. 
Jessica says, not only that, she says, but uh, the finances are so uncertain. The bills are piling up. And I'm just feeling stuck and lonely. No spouse in sight, a few personal medical concerns, and my family is having medical concerns also. So, so she says in that prayer request, when I read the prayer, she was saying, that my son is, is just super disrespectful, super rebellious. My daughter doesn't even talk to me. And I feel stuck where I am. She said, the finances are bad. The bills are coming in, and I don't know where the money is going to come from. And I'm, I'm dealing with some health issues. And then she says, my family is also dealing with some health issues that I have to deal with also. And but she didn't leave the prayer request there. She says, but I know that God is still with me. And I said to myself, what is she saying? What is Jessica saying? Jessica is saying that I'm going to be all right because I've got what it takes. Even though sometimes it takes all that I've got. Anybody here understand that? You're going through some things sometimes in life. Things are going well, and all of a sudden you have these health issues. You go to the doctor. You didn't know, like some young man the other day went to the doctor, didn't know that he had cancer in the fourth stage. All kinds of problems. The bills are coming in, and you don't have enough to handle the bills that are coming in. Health issues after health issues, going to the doctor, coming back from the doctor, discovering that when one thing is fixed on your body, there's something else going on inside of your body. Relationships are off, are, are, are off and all of that kind of a stuff. Can't get along with children. Children can't get along with parents. Parents can't get along with other folk in the neighborhood. All kinds of problems. You wonder sometimes, really, do you have what it to, Am I talking to anybody in the house? I, I know you look good on Sunday morning. I know you're all dressed up. I know you're putting on your Sunday best on Sunday morning. But beneath all of that, the, that kind of thing, those kinds of clothes, is there something else going, in your, going on in your mind? You've got a smile on your face. You put on all the makeup today. You got your hair right or either bought you some hair to put on. I don't know, but at the end of the day, is there something going on behind all of that? It happens to the best of us. I say it again and again. When it comes down to trouble, don't be shocked about trouble. The Bible says that in this world, ye shall have trials and tribulation. That's life to have these kinds of issues going on inside of your life. But it's not about having these kinds of issues. It's about how you handle the problem. Do you respond with it with just depression? I was reading the other day, listening to Andrew Young the other day, and he was talking about Martin Luther King Jr. and how Martin Luther King Jr. had a deep depression that he would go into and that sometimes he would, uh, uh, I think I told you, sometimes he would check himself into the hospital. He would go to his doctor and his doctor would say, well, Martin, there's nothing wrong with you physically, but I'm going to put you in the hospital for a few days because you just need some rest. And there were times to which Martin Luther King was so depressed. He took the weight of the world upon his shoulder, and he felt so bad when he could not deliver, especially when people were saying to him uh, the derogatory things about the works that he was doing. And he became so depressed that there were times that he couldn't even get out of bed, that they had to bring in people like Mahalia Jackson just to sing to him so he could get up out of bed. It happens to the best of us. And the question becomes, how do you handle what you are going through to get to where you need to go? Here is the text. It's right there in the book of Daniel, a very familiar story. I wish I could take my time and just preach it here today. It is about these three Hebrew boys named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were also in relationship with Daniel. They had all come from Jerusalem, if you will, uh, the city of Zion, if you will. 
And uh, what happens is, is that because of their, if you will, rebellion against God, it is God who sends them away. If you read it in the psalm, it says, by the river of Babylon, there we wept. We sat down and we wept. Uh, we hung our harps upon the willows. Y'all remember that? Upon the willow trees. And those who had carried us away captive required of us a song. And not only a song, but to sing it in a cheerful kind of way. You know, after all, you Jews know how to sing. They say that about Negroes. Negroes know how to sing. They do, really do. Uh, but at the end of the day, y'all ain't praying with me, so you got what you got. Uh, and so they said, there we hung our hops upon the willow, and those who had carried us away captive, y'all remember that, required of us a song and to sing it with Mary, our Mary. And we responded to them, how can we sing our songs in a strange land? They had been taken out to the riverside of Babylon, to Babylon, to Babylon. Chaldee, Chaldee. That's where Abraham had left out from the Ur, Chaldees of Ur, Ur of the Chaldees. Babylon, southern Iraq, and they were carried captive, but there were three boys by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego and young Di Daniel. Y'all remember Daniel, don't you? Daniel in the lion's den, thrown into the lion's den. He turns his face towards the east, and ultimately he is released out of the den of lions. I, can I take my time? And so there's these three boys who are promoted inside of the Babylonian kingdom up under King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar understands that they are foreigners, but they have certain gifts that they can offer to the kingdom. They understood a government. They understood accounting. They understood how to make Babylon prosperous. And so the king blessed them in Babylon. Do you not know that God can bless you in strange places? In strange land, in places that are not familiar with you. I wish I could preach this thing. I know some of you haven't been through very much lately, but keep on living. And you're going to discover that what you are going through in life is really strange. You haven't had these kinds of health issues. You haven't had these kinds of feelings before. You haven't gone through these kinds of dark days Keep on living. Someone used to say that life is not uh, a straight line, but life is filled with curves going this way and that way. It can be straight for a moment, and suddenly you'll find yourself going through the curves of life. Have I got a witness in the house? Sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down, and other times you're level to the ground. That's what life is all about. And so, and so there is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who are getting promotions in strange places. God will bless you in places that you never thought he would bless you in. I know I prophetically said something to somebody. Can I say it again? God will bless you in places where you never thought God would bless you in. He, he'll, he'll send you to the hospital. And you'll get a bad prognosis. And all of a sudden, things start to working out for your good. In strange. I wish I could preach it. In strange. Has anybody ever been blessed in the midst of some problems? Can you give God a great big hand praise? If you, if you came out on the other side, you ought to give him some real praise. If he brought you through on the other side, you ought to give him some real praise. You were in the darkest, despairing moment in your life, and somehow the Lord made a way out of no way. You ought to give him some real praise. You didn't think you were going to get through that thing, but somehow God made a way out of no in strange land. And when you're blessed like that, everybody ain't happy. Y'all might be sleepy right now, but I ain't that sleepy. Everybody ain't happy when you get blessed. You get a new car, and they say, look at them. They think they're all this, that, and that. No, no, this is just my blessing. You get a new house, they say, look at them now. They got a new car. You, you come in with a new suit. Look at me. Think, think there's some kind of got a new set of clothes on, you know, and, and they get jealous about what God has blessed you with when they don't understand what God has for you is for you, and what God has for me is for me. And, and as somebody said, don't challenge my blessing if you don't know my problem. 
or what I had to go through to get to what I'm at, where I'm at. And, and so there were three, the, the three boys were being, uh, they were being hated upon. Am I taking too long? They were hating on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were Babylonians, and they said, well, we're, we're, we're going to make sure that we, we plan, ah, I didn't know I was going to say this, we are going to plan their downfall. You know, there's a few folk around you who are just planning your downfall. They're just waiting on you to fall. And if they can help you, Humpty Dumpty sat upon the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great big fall. All the king horses and all the men could not keep Humpty Dumpty uh, together again. I always wondered who pushed Humpty Dumpty. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, who pushed him? I'm going to make y'all laugh anyhow. Who pushed him? And some folk are just waiting for you to get on the wall so they can push you down. All because they have a problem with your gifts. Y'all didn't get that. They hated Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because he had certain kinds of gifts. They had certain kinds of gifts. And people will hate on you just because you're gifted in a certain kind of a way. And so what did they do? They set up a golden image, and they said to everybody in the kingdom, and they said uh, to Nebuchadnezzar, this represents you. You are this golden image, and uh, we, let's make an edict that everybody must fall down and worship you and bow down before your golden image. Everybody would do that except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's something called counterculture. And any time you're counterculture, you'll find yourself in problems. The culture said, bow down towards the golden image. The three Hebrews said, no, we are counterculture. We don't agree with what the culture is telling us what to do because we are the sons, if you will, are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so we, we worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we cannot follow the culture because the culture is not consistent with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Y'all ain't getting it. And so we got to be counterculture. You see, the problem here is that everybody want us as Christians to follow the culture. And the culture right now is messed up. Y'all ain't getting this. Y'all going to work me today up in here, up in here, up in here. Whether you know it or not, what the culture is trying to do is destroy the church. I wish I could preach this thing. They out there talking about again. You know, you ain't got to go to church. I, I hear somebody said that to me on my post just this morning. Said, why I got to go to church? Give me a scripture. I wanted to slap her down. You don't question the pastor. I'm Dr. Macon. So I sent her a picture with a church building and a scripture that says, forsake not yourself, the assembling of yourself, one with another. Go to church. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it. See, I know where she's headed. I ain't got to go to church to be religion. No, you ain't got to go to church to be religion, but it sure do help a little bit. I wish I could preach this thing counterculture. The problem is that the culture is trying to tell us what to do. But the Bible says that ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are the city upon the hill. We are not to be following the culture. We are to be shifting the culture in the name of Jesus. Uh, well, well, let me go on. They were counterculture. They were going against the culture of their day. And so they said, no, we can't bow to your God. We got to bow to our God only. Well, Nebuchadnezzar did not have a problem with that until they made an edict that they had to bow to him in essence. And the Bible says in verse 19, he becomes furious. Don't miss that word. I asked you to look up that word and watch that word fury. He was furious. And the text says, what the text means is that he's very angry. 
Now, in the Message Bible, Eugene Peterson, it says this way. He doesn't turn red. He turns blue. He, he doesn't turn red. He turns purple. Now, I ain't seen too many people turn purple that was white. But I've seen blue black folk turn purple. Y'all not getting it. I saw I won't be plain. I'll just be suggestive. Uh, he begins to get angry, upset. Watch this. He is going to throw these three boys into the fiery furnace. And what he does is first, he, he sets the furnace up turns the furnace up seven times hotter. Why, it's so hot until the soldiers, if you will, who are escorting them inside of the furnace, uh, 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 when, 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 when they, in essence, toss the three boys in, the flames at a distance burn them up and they drop dead right there. It is extremely hot. It's, it's, it's symbolic. I wish I could preach it. It's, it's, it's metaphoric about the anger of Nebuchadnezzar. Turn it up! Has anybody ever said to you in essence, turn it up! Have you gone through something look like the enemy is saying, turn it up on them? It, it looks like they're saying, they ain't got enough of suffering. Turn it up! They have not experienced enough death. Turn it up! They have not experienced enough sickness. Turn the sickness up. They have not. They turn it up seven times hotter. And not only that, but if you read the text, it says that the king orders them to be placed into the fiery furnace with extra clothing. Put on a heavy coat. Put on another heavy coat on it. And it says, put on the tunic and also put on hats. Now, a tunic is a sort of Old Testament hat. But it says, put on tunic and hats. Put on shoes. Put on gloves. Put on all these kinds of things. What is he trying to do? This is the way people are sometimes. They don't just want you to burn. They want you to burn slowly. They don't want you uh, to be uh, to be getting got rid of suddenly. They want it to be a slow death. That's what happened to Jesus. They wanted to slow the death up. They could have just uh, killed him in the beginning and let it go and, and crucified and everything else. But no, they had to put him on a cross first and they had to take their time and it took him hours to die. Why? Because they actually wanted him to die a slow death. Give him the cross first and let him walk through the Via Della Rosia road. A slow death, slow death down. Satan was trying to slow the death down. Somebody said, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. There is a slow death. Let him smoldering inside of the fire. Let them, don't burn him up quickly. They go into the fiery furnace. I about finish. But what, what got me is, now here's what y'all think. Here's what me thinks. They're getting ready to push them into the fiery furnace. And we think that what happens is, is that the fourth man, or the fourth person shows up while they are in the fiery furnace. I, I really don't read it that way. Maybe y'all do, and I could be wrong. Just turn to your neighbor and say, may, say may, maybe they gave pastor a doctorate for nothing. Masters for nothing. I, I think what happened is, is that before they went into the fiery for furnace, the fourth man was already inside of the furnace. Which means that 
whatever they were getting ready to confront, y'all need to get this, that God always goes before us. And he's already in the furnace, the hot places of life in advance of us. So that when we come into those kinds of position, whether we know it or not, he's already there. Aren't you glad that he's already there in advance? He's already there in the fiery furnace. If you got to go through sickness, don't worry about a doctor because the doctor is already in the room. If you got to have surgery, don't worry about the surgeon that's in the room. There's somebody who already went inside of the room before you went to the surgery table. He's the fourth man in the fiery furnace. Have I got a witness in the, in the house? If you get depressed, don't worry about it because there's a fourth person already sitting at the table analyzing your mind and your condition already has the answer to your solution. He is the fourth person in the fiery furnace. Have I got a witness in the house? If a relative has to go through some kind of violent situation, don't worry about it because he's already there in the fiery furnace. He says to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come on in. I'm already inside of the furnace. I'll help you. I'll handle it. I'll deal with it. You might be bind up with all kinds of rope, but I want you to know I have a way of unbounding you. I have a way of taking those ropes from off of you. I have a way of taking you and giving you release even in the midst of the being bind in the fiery furnace. I'll take care of what's going on in you. And the, and, the, and the fire will never touch you. I don't know about you, but when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God, God, wasn't there some fire around me sometime ready to take me down and to take me out? I didn't see the fire. I couldn't, I couldn't feel the fire. He'll say, yes, you didn't see it. You didn't feel it. You were in a hot situation. Didn't know it, but I want you to know I was already in that hot situation so that you wouldn't feel it. Have I got a witness in the house? He will, bind, will, he will release you from whatever binds you, and then he will break whatever is trying to break you, and he will make you. I need to tell you today, he's broken me time and time again, but I've asked him to make me, give me a clean heart that I might serve you and worship you even in the midst of being broken. Anybody in the house been broken today? He will make you in the midst of your brokenness. Come on, stand on your feet. He will bind. When you're bound up, he will unloose you. He will unloose your guilt. He will unloose your pain. He will unloose your frustration. He will unloose your anger. He will unloose the situation for you. He'll open it up for you. When you are bound and something has bind you, we bind all the time. But King Jesus can help us with what binds us. He can come on choir. He can, he can make us when things break us. He can use what was intended to take us down to pull us up. And he can handle our burden. The songwriter said, King Jesus can roll all burdens away. Is there anybody in the house who can attest to that? Oh, come on. I know God has rolled some of your burdens away. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and is heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We're troubled on every side. We're persecuted. We're taken down. But in all of this, we are more than conquerors. Jessica, come here. You've had son, you got a son that's rebellious and super disrespectful. You got a daughter who won't even talk to you. You feel like you're stuck. You're having all kinds of financial issues. Family is having health issues. You've got health issues. You don't even have a partner in your life. But I need to tell you, that you're going to be all right in the midst of all of that because you have Jesus on your side. What does she say? She says, I've got all of this, but I know God is with me. But she didn't leave her prayer thoughts there. After she says that, she said, you know, I've had more laughing days than I've had crying days lately. 
She says, it looks like I got more strength and energy today than I ever had in my life. She says, there are some days that I barely, I'm barely able to get up out of my bed, but those are fewer and fewer as life goes on, even in the midst of all those other stuff. In essence, she said, I've got what it takes. I started shouting. I said, you don't need me to pray for you. You've already got the fourth person from the fiery in the fiery furnace of life. And you've got what it takes. Songwriter said, if I've got Jesus, then that's enough. As you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God even now, tell God how grateful you are. If you have Jesus in your life, let him know that you're, you're grateful because now you've been reaffirmed and affirmed that you've got what it takes. We used to sing a song, me and Jesus got a good thing going. We don't need nobody to tell us right from wrong. Let Jesus lead you. Today, if you don't have Jesus in your heart, which means you have him in your mind, your spirit, your soul, you will discover that you do not have what it takes to make it in life. But if you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have what it takes. If you're here today, Maybe we could just join in with those other folk in praying the prayer of salvation. Would you just say, dear God, I thank you for being in the fiery furnace with me. You died on the cross. You were buried and resurrected from the grave. I always want you in my life. You made a promise to me. You would never let my hand go. And you will have an eternal grip upon my life. And so we will be together forever through thick and thin. And because of this prayer, I know I have what it takes to enter into heaven even now. Would you keep talking to God now? Make your request be known unto him. Tell him what you want. Tell him what you need right now. You know what it is. If you're in the fiery furnace, tell him that you've been in the furnace or you're in the fiery furnace and you need him to stay with you. The king looked into the fiery furnace and said to his servants, did not we put three in? Behold, I see a fourth one walking. And he looks like he's the son of God. If you're here today, you've never been baptized, you need to be baptized. And I hope that you will fill out one of those connect cards and be baptized. If you have family members not, that are not baptized or in church, tell them to stop being counter to the culture. The culture said you don't need Sunday. You don't need church. You don't need the preacher. You don't need the fellowship. You don't need to be hanging out with Christian folks anymore because they're not Christian and all of that. You go against the culture and say, no, I need the fellowship. I need the church. The preacher's feet themselves are beautiful. I need the Lord on my side. You are looking at us online. We pray that you will hit that button. Email us right now. Say, I want to be saved. Or either say, I said that prayer. Now I need to know the second steps. Oh God, we thank you again for this time that you've allowed us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now God, remind us every day that we wake up that when the enemy tells us we don't have what it takes, Remind us what the sermon and the message that you gave today that we do have. What it takes as long as we take Jesus with us. Bless us and thank you, God, for this moment of worship. In Jesus' name we pray. All the people of God said amen. Give God a great big hand praise. Turn to your neighbor. Give them a wave and say, neighbor, I'll see you next Sunday. Amen. God bless you. God be with you. Come on, choir. You made a way, you made a way.